I'm Jeff Cohen. This is Robert Lombardo, our author today. Um, so just for background purposes, uh, I'm a criminal justice writer, or at least I, I mostly was for the Tribune over the past 10 years or so. I worked at both uh, criminal courthouses and a few years ago wrote um, a book called about the Family Secrets case, a uh, famous mob case here in Chicago. So that's why I think Robert and I are uh, paired up today. So Robert has written a, a book that I really enjoyed. It looks like this, Organized Crime in Chicago. Um, that really is uh, an overarching history. The, the title kind of gives it away, but it really is sort of soup to nuts, organized crime in Chicago, uh, part narrative, part, I think, academic study. Robert is a former Chicago police officer, um, then in his second life is now an associate professor of criminal justice at Loyola here in town. Um, so he's one of the key experts in the city in terms of um, what organized crime is and was here and its past, its present, and uh, where it may be going. Uh, the book really you know, begins sort of in the, the Levy era in Chicago, sort of the, the crime-ridden city that was born out of the 1800s and it carries through prohibition and the outfit heyday and some of the late stages of organized crime here in Chicago. And uh, Robert, I don't know if you want to maybe just take a minute to introduce the book yourself and explain how it came to be and, and what your uh, goals were in putting it together. Well, good afternoon, and I want to thank the Tribune and the Lit Fest for inviting me here. I grew up in a neighborhood where even as a grammar school child, I was familiar with organized crime. Uh, we had uh, a neighborhood hot dog stand where you know my mother worked she had a job, we came from a broken home, and so I'd get a quarter every day to go out for lunch. And at Moon's Hot Dog Stand at Chicago and Hamlin, we had all the neighborhood gangsters. So even at a young age, even at seventh and eighth grade in my neighborhood, we had an understanding of what organized crime was. As a teenager in high school, I went to work in my uncle's grocery store, and we had a regular parade of gangsters that would come in there because we made Italian sausage. And they'd come for this sausage. And there was one Christmas, I even delivered it to many different homes. It's a funny story. I had 100 pounds of Italian sausage, the Christmas special, we made with tomatoes and provolone cheese in the trunk of the car in 10 pound packages. So my uncle gave me his Chrysler Imperio and Ross Prio, the head gangster for the North Side, gave us a list. And I went from door to door in all these homes in River Forest ringing the doorbell saying, Ross sent me. <laughs> and I handed them 10 pounds of sausage. So, I mean, when you grow up that way, it's something that kind of stays with you. So when, once I became a police officer. Well, you didn't tell us how many thousands of pounds of sausage you sold. <laughs> it was quite a bit. You know, it was only natural me, for me to kind of gravitate towards uh, that type of work. And I worked in what we call the Organized Crime Division for about 12 years. Worked narcotics, I worked gambling, and then I did work on hoods on the actual intelligence squad. And uh, later on, uh, forfeiture investigations. You know, take the property of drug dealers and syndicated gamblers, things like that. So it's always been a part of my life. So when it came time, I was in graduate school, I thought, boy, if I got a PhD, they'd make me superintendent of police, but it didn't work out that way. So it was only natural for me to write about organized crime, and actually this book was an outgrowth of my PhD dissertation. And then I, you know, I taught part-time, I taught at DePaul for about seven, eight years part-time, then the opportunity came to go to Loyola full-time in criminal justice. And now, just like in the police department where I had to produce every year or every month, I have to produce at Loyola. So it's Publisher Parish. So this is my second book in the 10 years that I've been at Loyola. And it was only natural to pursue organized crime. You know, and as a sociologist, a trained sociologist, uh, criminology is my area of interest. It, I, it was only natural for me. I've, I've looked at all the literature on organized crime, and I haven't found any book since 1927, John Landesco's book, Organized Crime in Chicago. There hasn't been a book that has explained organized crime sociologically. There has not been a book that has used the accepted criminology theories to explain organized crime. And that's what I tried to do with this book. 
the only book review that I can find that's currently out there on the web is from a librarian, and he said, great book, skip the first chapter and the last chapter, it's all about theory. But everything in the middle is a fun read. So my idea was to actually use real life facts, that's why I delved into history, to interpret or explain the different theories. So by ap applying what really happened to the various explanations for organized crime, I make an argument for what I feel is, is the appropriate explanation. Well, and I would say that my, those are my two favorite chapters, I think, actually. I've, I've written, a, I've read a lot about organized crime, obviously, and I really thought that that's what made this book unique, was an attempt to really explain what was going on in terms of human behavior and the political system and the economic system in Chicago. Especially at the beginning of the book, uh, Robert takes great pains to sort of chop away at the old theory that um, organized crime here was really just an, an import of the old country yeah. through New York and you know the black hand and, and all that. That really, it's not something that, that came over on the boat, so to speak. It was something that was much more homegrown and came out of the disorder uh, that was uh, very evident in early Chicago, especially the beginning of the 1900s, and that really it could have been um, any dominant ethnic group, and it, it, obviously there were times when it was, uh, there were Irish mobsters and Jewish mobsters, and it, it's not necessarily an Italian-American problem, but it is an American problem. I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit, but I, I was interested in the fact that you, you made a good, solid attempt, I think, to, to cut down on that, that idea that this is just an imported problem and, and came over from Sicily. Which brings us to really the two competing theories to explain traditional organized crime, as we call this, because there's all kinds of organized crime. We had a Dixie Mafia that didn't have any Italians. You have the Blackstone Rangers. You had the Gangster Disciples. You had all these various street gangs, but in fact, they are organized crime. But none of them have ever reached the pinnacle of power that what we call traditional organized crime has in American society. And again, the two competing explanations are the first is, of course, this idea that it came from Sicily, which we call the alien conspiracy theory, that southern Italian and Sicilian immigrants brought the mafia with them to America at the turn of the last century. And the competing, what the sociologists call the ethnic succession theory, is simply that various ethnic groups have used crime in order to advance in society. We look around today, we see who the poor people are. They're often the immigrants that come to our country. People that come here with no money are regulated to sometimes the worst neighborhoods, the, the poorest sections of the city, lack of opportunity, uh, no jobs available to them. And this even applies to African Americans who immigrated from the rural areas of the South. And so they turn to crime. For people that are discriminated against, people that are excluded from social advancement, historically have turned to crime in order to better themselves, so to speak. Not as an excuse, but as a reality. So this is what's been known as the ethnic succession theory. The Irish, Jewish people, the Italians, blacks and Hispanics in that order have all used organized criminal activity as a means of social advancement within American society. So if you look at traditional organized crime, if we look at those Italians, and I'm one of them, if we look at the Chicago outfit, and earlier they were known as the Capone Syndicate. If we look at that criminal organization through those types of glasses, we see a different interpretation than the one that argues that it was imported from the south of Italy. And we can get into what the mafia really was at the, in the south of Italy at the turn of the last century. It was vastly different than what uh, the media tells us it was what's portrayed in the movies. You know, people forget that The Godfather was fiction. Uh, it, it wasn't a real story. It, it was, in fact, just, just that, a story. As a matter of fact, I mean, there's evidence that gangsters imitated the movie. It wasn't art imitating life, but it could have been life imitating art. Um, I can go on and on. I don't know well, if Jeff has another question, but... Yeah, I that's my job. So okay. um, I was, again, I thought the book was great because it really did build in all the known facts, I think, and really show kind of the sweeping arc of how things came together. Um, so it goes through prohibition. It goes through Al Capone. I think some of the, the parts of history 
that everybody knows in terms of uh, Chicago's sort of sad past in this category. But then it, it brings in um, other parts of the